Hey, this is Jeff again with SimSamurai.net. Uh, basically, in this little uh, demonstration tutorial, I want to show you how to make a bevel cut uh, using a skill saw such as this. Um, you could do this on plywood, you could do this on hardwood, um, you know, really any piece of wood. Um, but as you see, what I have set up here is I'm cutting a 1x10 for another project I'm working on. Um, but this is what you call a rip fence, this piece of aluminum. I, I bought this, uh, I think, for about 10 or 15 bucks at Home Depot. It actually breaks into two 48 inch sections and has a little piece in the middle that allows you to snap it together. And what this is, is just what it says it is, is a rip fence and allows you to set your saw blade up against that rip fence and then withholding you know, good pressure against that rip fence uh, allows you to make a really nice straight clean cut. Um, in fact, in many cases I use this for cutting plywood because uh, a big sheet of plywood is hard to get up on a table saw. Um, and so using a rip fence method like this actually lets you make just as nice a cut that you would get on a table saw. Um, so basically I've propped this up with some 4x4 block underneath to keep it up off the ground. Obviously you need that clearance height um, for your blade so you're not hitting the ground. Um, you can also use 2x4, you know, get two 8-foot pieces of 2x4, cut them up into 4-foot sections and then space those out about 2 feet apart. Um, if you're cutting something like plywood, that, that's a great uh, platform. Of course, you want to make sure you set it out either on your driveway or garage floor on a really nice, straight, uh, clean level surface. You know, if there's any rocks or any little pebbles in the way, make sure you get those out so you've got a really nice flat surface to work with. Anyway, I'm, I need to cut a 45 degree bevel on this. And so what you do is on your skill saw like this, there's a little set uh, lever and you want to rotate this out and you also notice I don't have the saw plugged in. You want to make sure when you're setting all this up, leave your saw unplugged until you're ready to cut just for safety purposes. Um, so basically, any saw, uh, skill saw will have a little bevel angle marker and you can see the 45 right there. So I want to rotate it over to 45 and there it is and then I pull the lever tight and as I'm doing that sometimes it'll push itself back off your lines. Just make sure it stays nice and straight on the mark and then tighten it down, recheck the mark. Okay, that's good and tight and there we go. So now as you can see the saw is set up to cut a 45 degree bevel. Um, but what you also need to know is your distance from the blade and with, in this case I'm making a cut uh, with my fence on the left and in your builder manuals for the flight sim stations it goes into detail, actually great detail about cutting wood uh, you know from two sides of the material whether you, you know you're cutting this way or coming back and cutting the opposite direction and then also how that relates to which side of the line you want to, want to cut on uh, i.e. whether your scrap material is on your left or right and of course what you want to keep uh, is on your left or right so that's very important you always want to make sure you know what side of the line you're going to place your blade on um, in this case I'm actually coming up to the square edge of this wood and I don't want to lose any material, just want to cut off an exact 45 off that end. And so what that does when you angle your blade to a bevel like this is you're actually trying to get that measurement um, from the left side of the blade over here uh, to your fence. And that distance for me from the fence line to my blade while set at a 45 degree angle comes out to 2 and 5 eighths inches, 2 and 5 eighths. And so basically, when I set this uh, rip fence in place, I took my ruler, which I will grab here, and basically measured two and five eighths inch over and held it on the line and then clamped my rip fence in place. And then did it, uh, same thing down on the other end, two and five eighths. And in the middle, um, because this is a wide piece, you're not going to be able to necessarily clamp it. So, same thing, you want to make a two and five eighths inch line, push it back, and then just make a pencil mark on either side of the line, on either side of your rip fence. So you know if your rip fence is wavering at all off that line, uh, then you know then you're getting off your cut. So that's very important. If you have a friend to hold this as you're cutting, um, as you cut in the middle, that can apply downward pressure like this, uh, with your fingers out of the way, of course, um, or even stand on it like that, just with your foot on the side while they cut. Uh, will also help you to make a really straight cut. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to plug the saw in and I'll just make a little bit of a cut so you can see how this works and how I do it. Um, so now the saw's ready to go. You want to keep your hand on the handle. 
fire it up and then place it right against that line. You can lift the uh, safety fence out of the way a little bit just with your left finger and still hold on with your forefinger and your thumb. Slide it up close to the line, watch where your blade is about to penetrate the wood, bring the speed up to full rotational speed and then cut. stop right here because as you can see I'm already starting to push this line off a little bit and so uh, my cameraman's now gonna have to hold that in place for me but anyway as you can see we've made a 45 degree bevel cut um, as you can see it's coming out um, right there right on the corner so I'm not actually losing any material I am just cutting right exact to the edge of the piece of material um, and so that's perfect I'm, I'm trimming off an exact uh, 45 degree piece. Um, if you're using clamps like this, I do recommend you get the shorter ones that are only about 12 inches high so you don't have all this extra bar length hanging up. Uh, obviously this can be dangerous. You don't want to impale yourself on this, so be very careful. Um, again, that's it for bevel cuts. Um, hopefully in some other videos I'll show you how to do this on plywood, but basically that's the gist of it and uh, how you make a nice bevel angle cut on a piece of stock lumber or plywood. Thanks for watching. Again, Jeff, SimSamurai.net. Bye.